Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you an October caddis and a bread crust nymph, neither of which follow the original recipe. But sometimes we have to use the materials that we have, and some of it is maybe just experimentation. But either way, I think they're both viable flies, and we'll catch some fish this fall. I'm going to tie both flies on a size 16 fulling mill. Um, it's an FM5085. I like the color of this Danville 140 denier for the October caddis. And I don't have a fly shop, so I'm going to pick various feathers from this pheasant skin. Uh, there's plenty here to match colors and uh, imitate an October caddis. The first fly is ribbed with fine copper wire. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of this Hair's Ear Plus uh, for a thorax. And there's the end result. So it's got a uh, chubby little body wrapped uh, pheasant rump feathers or fibers and uh, another pheasant feather for the uh, hackle and a nice big bulky brown head on it. This fly was nice but a little ho-hum so I switched the orange thread and I'm going to use a hackle stem and some gold tinsel for a rib. We're going to use some of that same Hairs Plus dubbing. Add a little um, ice dubbing for the thorax. And I'm going to produce a fly that's a little different, and it's kind of a variation of a bread crust nymph. So it's maybe a little more flashy. Uh, it's, got, it's a little more complex, which I don't think the fish um, worries so much about. But uh, eh, I tried to make something different, and uh, you want to keep yourself interested when you're tying flies. And so here we go. So I grabbed a bundle of fibers from one of the... Uh, that's probably near the rump on the uh, pheasant skin. And they had a little color in them, and I thought that was good. We're, I think we're trying to imitate a little bit of a shuck here. Um, caddis flies, when they hatch in the fall, they, they kind of swim to shore or to some object that sticks above the water. And I think they crawl up and hatch from there. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not an entomologist. You kind of read these things, and it, blur it gets a little blurry at times, but uh, that's how I remember it. So... Here we're tying in that um, hackle stem. Now that's a hackle stem from a, um, I think it was a Coq de Leon cape. And they're very strong and they make, they have, uh, they're two, usually two-toned and they make um, great uh, hackle stem flies or in this case a rib. And I'm going to add a short piece of uh, the mylar tinsel. I'm tying that silver side up. Hopefully it flips over and I, I want it to be gold when it's all said and done. And this thread's a little old. It's Danville's. I don't want to knock Danville's thread, but um, it separates on me. I'm left-handed, so it unwinds or untwists while I, while I tie with it. But it breaks and frays. Um, it's probably because I've had it a long time. But it, it gets a little fuzzy as I use it here, and I kind of get by, but uh, I'm probably due for a new spool of some kind of orange thread. So here we're adding some of that Hairs Plus stubbing. You can see it's basically rabbit fur dyed orange, and it's got a little, that's probably Antron mixed in it. And uh, so you get a little bit of that flash. So my dubbing's a little lumpy. But if you work it out and you, you lay an extra wrap in the, in the grooves, uh, the body still comes out kind of smooth. And with a couple of ribs going over it, I don't think it's it has to be perfectly consistent or if something shows through, uh, it's probably not a problem. So there we've got a nice little chunky body about three quarters of the way up. And I'm going to sneak in here and give it a whip finish so nothing comes loose. I'm going to use the rotary feature of the vise to add the ribs. So tinsel first. And I want to be careful here. If you just try and pull it up onto the body uh, in, a, in a place where it's not comfortable, it'll slip off later. I've heard a 
fly tire out there saying about the tinsel falling off the back of the body and um, like I said I was kind of deliberate about where that tinsel crawled up onto the body so it's going to stay tight for me. So there I'm doing the uh, the bob and drop over method. Uh, working between the camera and the, the hook is uh, yeah, it limits you at times. I think if I was doing this without a camera, I would have rolled the vise around and had everything facing me so I could just switch hands and, and keep control of everything. So another half hitch. Actually, it's two half hitches or kind of almost a whip finish when you do it that way. So here's our hackle stem and I'm going to try and line it up with the edge of the uh, the gold mylar. And again, being very deliberate, I'm not trying to crank these out. I will later after I make one or two more, but um, for now this was pretty much experimentation. And that's another point too. I, it's not like I tied 10 of these and this is the really good one and I filmed it and um, I do stop the camera sometimes so I don't waste time in between. You don't need to watch me reaching for something else or watch nothing happen while I reach for something else. So we've got the rib pulled up. I spaced those apart pretty good, you notice, because we want some of that orange to show through. It's buggy and uh, some of the hair is sticking out. I'm trying to trim off anything that's facing forward. Yeah, I'm going to twist on a little bit of the ice stub. Yeah, it doesn't take much. So we're just trying for a little ball here that will help uh, hold those soft tackle fibers out. And then there's a, a, a feather that I picked from the pheasant skin. I kind of prepared it. Now, I've gone back and forth on these. This one, I'm going to tie it in from the stem. I've determined the length of the fibers that I want to add. And that the stem is thin enough there. I'm kind of testing it. Tug on. I left it on there because I was thinking it tends to pull loose uh, on occasion. And if you leave the stem on, you get another chance at it. Everything's still there. You can tie it down again. But I have the length of fiber that I want. I'm going to come in at the stem. This way, if, if you start at the tip, you're using the weakest part of the stem just by design. And I don't know. I'd like to come back at it from this direction when you can. So that um, it might not have been a bad idea to um, strip one side of the feather here. I have a lot of legs just for that. That's probably a turn and a half. And there are there are a lot of fibers on that soft tackle. So I came from behind, so I basically have two wraps across that hackle to hold it down. And when we build the head, we'll be coming back over the end, so I'm not worried about it coming loose. Kind of trimming some junk away till I find out where the stem is. And we'll push everything back and trim off the butt section of the stem and try and build a nice head. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit while you watch me fiddle with this stuff, but basically we're just pushing everything back and building a head. Late, later in here, a couple seconds from now, you'll see the thread, and it could be a rough spot on my finger, but it kind of frays a little bit, and I get some fuzzies, but I'm able to fix that. Uh, those fibers might be a little long. Um, they go all the way back to the end of the tail. The tail's a little long compared to some of these you see out there, but uh, I don't know. A little longer doesn't seem to hurt. You get a little more movement. And uh, we're going to build up a nice orange thread. But I recall last fall I was standing in the um, 
what was it, the south branch of the North Fork of the Potomac River. So some of you guys might know where that is and why I was there. And uh, we stayed away. We were in West Virginia and stayed away a couple of days. And we fished in the river. The water was nice. And uh, we fished soft tackles. And uh, these flies, soft, brown soft tackles with uh, either orange or red heads were the ticket. And um, I hope they are again this year. We have a, a trip coming up in a few weeks. And so that's what set me down the path. I'm going to put a row of these in my fly box and hope I catch some fish. So I'll kind of brush that out a little bit. and You can see that I think that thread's a little fuzzy yet up front. Not sure if I showed it on camera. Yeah, I did. Um, don't try this at home, folks. I don't think we're supposed to play with fire. But just a quick flash of the uh, lighter, and it'll singe up the real fine hairs. And a good coat of head cement. In this case, Sally Hansen's hard as nails. Um, right, makes that head look nice. I'm not sure the video does it justice, uh, um, but the uh, that makes a really nice effect. That dubbing with the uh, with both ribs wrapped the way they are. So a little more Sally Hansen's cover the whole thing, and there you have it. So between the two, I kind of like this one better. Um, but again, using up some feathers on the the pheasant tail skin that I may not have used otherwise and producing something that will catch fish. So hopefully some of this is uh, helps you guys out and thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. And until next time, be safe.